Well, four years ago, I had the idea that we should look at a festival because we're always looking in Bournemouth how we can improve things. And bearing in mind we had lots of venues, a symphony orchestra of our own, I felt we should perhaps follow the lines of other towns and have a festival. Well, I don't know why Bournemouth hasn't had a big festival like this before, because there was something like, I don't know, 600 festivals around the country, from the smallest village to Edinburgh. But it was clear that, that it would be good to have a, a major arts festival. It is my privilege and pleasure to declare this festival open, which I do, and to invite all of you to rise and drink a toast to the Bournemouth International Festival. In a way, it's very surprising there hasn't been one before. Um, you know, a big town like Bournemouth, you would expect to have an arts festival, so many places do. And I think it's obviously a very good idea, especially when you've got the, the local symphony orchestra based here, an orchestra as good as the Bournemouth Symphony. Well, I'm playing the Elgar Concerto this evening. Um, it's one of the very greatest pieces for cello. I've been very associated with it, really. Um, and. It's, all, it's a piece I never get tired of playing, and no matter how many times I, I play it, I, it's always something I look forward to playing. And uh, it's a tremendously well-written piece for the cello, very well uh, written with the orchestra. The balance between cello and orchestra is just right, and it's one of the great works. <laughs> before the First World War. Those before the First World War were both veterans and Edwardians. And then after 1919, we've got vintage cars. And then after 1930, we have got post-vintage thoroughbreds. going to be one of the three groups on the uh, jazz concert tonight. Uh, Ronnie Scott's band playing and uh, so is Humphrey Littleton, his band, and so is John Chilton's Feet Warmers who are 
play with me, so that's that. Uh, of course, the festival idea really is comparatively new, but now every town, every village has a festival of some sort. And I think it's great because it, uh, it, for a start, it shakes the town up a bit, whatever it is. And for another thing, it attracts the public. We have given it to street level. Well, I was asked if I would be Lewis Carroll, play the part of Lewis Carroll in Alice in Wonderland with the local dancing schools. I, I was really appreciative of the work that they'd put in on my behalf as well. And I enjoyed that. I thought that was two very good nights. And, uh, and I, uh, you know, I'm sure that all the parents and all the people that came to see the show would have enjoyed it. I take this opportunity of welcoming you all to this lovely Chase Manhattan building for this concert by the Lucerne Festival Street. public artist in, this, in that I make a lot of things that are public, uh, the things that um, people encounter during the course of their day, rather than going especially to an art gallery to find them. Yes, the visual arts programme I think was a fairly strong programme, and at the core of it was this environmental artist project, where we invited four international environmental artists, outdoor artists, to visit Bournemouth and work um, in situ for a period of time during the festival, creating work often from natural materials. Working in the street, I make uh, dwelling places for an imaginary civilization of little people. So I work in the street constructing them out of little bricks, clay bricks. People come by and talk to me. Festival. I mean, I was overwhelmed by the variety and the sense that it really is international. 
and not just to do with music, but to do with other aspects of the arts. And, you know, I was just really surprised, if you like, um, for the first time that um, a fairly wee place, such as Bournemouth, with all due respect, um, has put on such a tremendous festival. And I feel really excited about it. wonderful percussion instruments and you know I'm really intrigued <laughs> group at Zido, who gave workshops and performed at the Winter Gardens in the second week of the festival. Altogether, I think we can justifiably say that it was a truly international festival. festival of this magnitude that not only do you get the, the major celebrity international artists but also that it's not just top rate professionals but we do have the community and the educational projects very much involved. The educational projects involving schools include a number of workshops, schools concerts, painting workshops, the Ross Cats, literary workshops, writing workshops. And what the hats that I wear, of course, is being a conductor. And I've worked all my life as a professional conductor in various ways. And so it was good to be able to make a personal musical input into the festival, as well as being a manager, administrator, if you like.
Of the four elements? They, so they say, but I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. That is scholar. What is there for eat to drink, eh? Ah, Marion, I say, a stoop of wine! Here comes the foolie, babe! Calm down, my heart! <laughs> Did you never see the picture of we three? Ah! <laughs> Welcome, ass! Let's have a taxa! Ooh, my God! The Festival Club was um, an interesting project that most festivals do have a club of some kind where the artists can meet and where the public can meet. And for this first festival, we chose the Lucalis Room, as, which is part of the pavilion. In Amsterdam, I saw the light of day. My mother was a girl you could buy. My father promised her a wedding ring. Just alive. Well, my name is Chris Ibertonioni. I'm a film director. We've been invited to come to the Bournemouth International Festival in order to show our films and also um, to interact with them in the totally unique kind of way that we do interact with our films. Um, we, we actually have the, the actor inside the projector here, and all the locations are on, on the roller blind device. <laughs> I'm ready, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready to do it. Okay, turn out the lights, Chris. Oh. <laughs> There's Chris's stage name, Michael. <laughs> Saying goodbye to all his friends, all this kind of people. He's setting off on a kind of mythological quest. Bye-bye, bye-bye. And he sets out down the garden path <laughs> into the country. He sees a flower and he picks it, <laughs> sniffs it, and carries on. Oh my God, what's that? Flying eggs, careful, Chris, flying eggs. Coming into a forest now, the edges of the forest, is passing in and out behind the trees. Because, I mean, the arts, after all, is, is, is all about, um, is just as much about experimenting and, um, and comedy and laughter, you know, sort of, um, the, the fringes of the arts are just as important as, as the more conventional side of the art. <laughs>
I'm conducting. I love working with these wonderful musicians, the orchestra, the excellent choir, soloists, solo singers, and of course the Mozart Requiem is a heart-rending work. It's most wonderful music, marvelous music. Mozart is Well, I wish it great luck and may go on for a long, 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 long time, many, many years. And I'm very happy to be part of it and to bring the first one to a close. And I've been very encouraged by the atmosphere that people has been created and the feedback coming to back to me is that it's been wonderful. A lot of people have enjoyed it. Plans are already underway for next year to, to, to um, develop the festival roughly at the same time during that uh, two, three weeks of, of June. By all means, uh, I come again. I'll have you a very good time. We would probably fly all the way from New York, especially to come and uh, take part in the Bournemouth Festival. I, I'm sure it will go from strength to strength. <laughs>